An army colonel faced serious allegations when a woman accused him of rape. The accusation had significant consequences for his life and military career. Recently, a judge issued a ruling on the case. When the decision was announced in court, it elicited a strong reaction due to its controversial nature. Before we embark on this captivating journey, we kindly invite you to show your support by engaging with our content. Please consider giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel, and leaving a thoughtful comment stating, I've subscribed. Additionally, if you find this story as inspiring as we do, don't forget to share it with your loved ones. Your support means the world to us. In 2013, Susan Shannon, a blogger from Everett, Washington, published a post on her personal website making serious allegations against a U.S. Army officer. Shannon, then 52, claimed that in 1986, while both were cadets at the United States Military Academy at West Point, she was sexually assaulted by David Riggins, who later became an Army colonel. According to Shannon's account, the alleged incident occurred after a party where she had consumed alcohol. She stated that Riggins offered her a ride home, and she lost consciousness in the vehicle. Shannon reported that she left West Point shortly after this alleged event, while Riggins continued his military career, eventually attaining the rank of colonel in the U.S. Army. Shannon stated that she did not report the alleged incident at the time, citing the military's cultural expectations of silence. She claimed that even during her exit interview from West Point, she felt pressure not to report misconduct by fellow cadets, which prevented her from mentioning the alleged assault. Nearly 30 years later, Shannon decided to share her account publicly. She said her decision was influenced by media coverage of several high-profile sexual assault cases in the military. Rather than approaching authorities, Shannon chose to write about her alleged experience on her personal blog, Short Little Rebel. In this post, she identified Riggins by name and described him as a rapist. Shannon published her allegations against Riggins shortly after his nomination for a significant promotion was announced. Shannon stated she was unaware of Riggins' nomination when she wrote her blog post, saying she only learned of it when contacted by Army officials investigating her claims. The allegations had an immediate impact on Riggins' military career. Riggins, a combat veteran from Alexandria with service in Iraq and Afghanistan, was under consideration for promotion to Brigadier General when Army leadership became aware of Shannon's blog post. Following the public accusations, Riggins' promotion was put on hold. Riggins strongly denied all allegations made against him. Riggins firmly stated to ABC7, I did not rape Susan Shannon. I did not sexually assault Susan Shannon. Every aspect of her story is verifiably false. The military conducted an investigation into the allegations, but found insufficient evidence to pursue charges against Riggins. However, the investigation and public accusations had already impacted his career, leading to his retirement from the Army. In response to the situation, Riggins decided to take legal action. He contended that Shannon's blog post, which he claimed contained false allegations, had significantly damaged his reputation and career prospects. Army Colonel Will Riggins filed a defamation lawsuit against Susan Shannon, asserting that her allegations had negatively impacted his career advancement. The court ruled in Riggins's favor. The judge ordered Shannon to pay Riggins a total of $8.4 million in damages. This sum was divided into two parts. $3.4 million in compensatory damages to address injury to Riggins's reputation and lost wages, and $5 million in punitive damages. This verdict was reported by the Washington Post. Shannon expressed dissatisfaction with the verdict. I feel like I'm a financial slave for the rest of my life, she stated. I told the truth in my article. In the trial, the jury, composed of four women and three men, reached a different conclusion. They found in favor of Riggins in what they reportedly considered a clear-cut case. Jurors later indicated that they found Riggins' testimony credible and expressed less confidence in Shannon's account of events. According to one juror's statement, the panel quickly reached a consensus on the credibility of the testimonies. We held a vote, and everybody believed the colonel, the juror said. The jury's main deliberation reportedly focused on determining the amount of damages. 
Riggins expressed that the verdict was a step towards addressing the impact on his life, but noted that the monetary award doesn't fully compensate for his experiences. He described the process as a years-long journey that had been challenging for his family. Riggins suggested that the financial aspect of the verdict was less significant to him than the jury's decision itself. Tom Clare, a defamation lawyer with experience in similar cases, offered his perspective on the verdict. In cases like these, plaintiffs often seek vindication and an opportunity to correct the public record regarding their reputation, Clare stated. He commented on the impact of online communications in today's digital environment, noting that even a blog post or tweet can have far-reaching consequences. If false information spreads online, juries may be inclined to award significant damages. Claire added that many clients in defamation cases are primarily seeking public acknowledgement that the claims against them were false. What do you think of this story? Have you ever experienced something like this? Share your thoughts in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.